Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to bring you a guide about artifacts. Now a lot of people actually asked me um, previously about you know which knife should be equipped with which artifact but I didn't really want to do this guide back then because um, in all honesty if you look at a lot of the artifacts you will notice that there's a massive power jump if you uh, upgrade your artifact to rank 3 or rank 5 etc. Take a, uh, take Golden Bow as an example. If you are just simple level 1, the additional effect it does is deal 15% extra damage to your enemy with HP above 80%, which is okay, fine. But if you look at all the way to rank 5 or rank 3, it's increased crit rate and armor penetration for 5 seconds after releasing any skill. And that's like a totally different kind of tactic altogether. And that's why I didn't really want to do something back then because it's just a bit immature. Um, a lot of the artifacts wouldn't be at their full power. And artifact pieces are really rare for you to get. The only way you can get it is either from idle rewards or um, kind of star hill. You can also buy weekly um, chest with actual money in order to upgrade them, but vast majority of people wouldn't do that. So as a result, most of the artifact would be probably stuck at rank one. And because it's not at full power, I didn't want to do anything any guide on teaching people what to do because it's just not fair right because you are not actually using it to its most advantage however something which quite nice happened recently is in the last month or so is that the game now started releasing a different type of artifact one for each class of characters so for example you have this one which is only exclusive to assassins and the nice thing with this is that you can actually now have something called Universal Fragments, which you get a lot more easily, either through events or through various different routes. And now you actually have a choice of which artifact to upgrade. So that's why I decided, you know what, it's time for me to actually make a guide about artifact. Now, one thing I will stay up front is that when I talk about the knights for every single artifact, I am going to talk about it from the long term end game angle. So I am going to talk how which knives will be best suited if you have artifacts all the way to the max. Obviously, that may not be feasible for vast majority of the player base, but I don't want to keep on making the same guide over and over again. So, you know, just bear that in mind when you read through my um, video description, etc. Every single night that when I decide to put it here, I'll talk about the reason why, and a lot of time it is actually gonna do with the rank 3 or the rank 5 skills, just bear that in mind. And likewise, please do watch the video rather than just trying to copy the knights here, because the vast majority of knights are actually suitable for multiple artifacts. So do not just take it for granted what's on the screen. I don't have everything unlocked, there's only a limited number of knights I can tag to every single one of them, and therefore do not just take that as the only artifact that you want to equip it with. Okay, now let's start off with all the exclusive ones, in fact. Um, they're a lot easier to get. The skills for every single one of them is the same, regardless of the rank, it's like the same type of skills. And basically what that means is because you are so much easier to rank them up, what I would suggest is vast majority of the time you want to equip your knives with this first, just because they give you slightly higher stats bonus, etc. So it just makes sense at early stages. Eventually, once you start unlocking a bit more of the rank 3, rank 5 for the other artifacts, gen they are generally better than the exclusive one, to be honest. But, you know, for the time being, if you don't have them up, you kind of just settle with the exclusive ones. I'm going to start off with Hades Sword. This one is basically really suitable for any knight which are more offensive based. So warriors knights are generally knights who are a bit more balanced. So some of them could be quite offensive based, some of them are quite defensive based. So for vast majority of the character warriors, you can put them here. So the only exceptions I would say is probably gonna be Krishna and Sirius. They are defensive knights, so there's absolutely no point of putting them into here. This one's mainly for offensive knights. And the other exception I would make is also for Saga Light. The reason is the skill here basically gives you extra boost for 6 seconds when your HP is lower than 50%. However, when Saga Light's HP is low, he is going to hide away, in which point he is not going to do anything. So this is just going to be wasted on. So, you know, apart from Krishna, Sirius, and Saga Light, all of the other warrior characters, you can equip them with Hades Sword. 
Next one, Pope's Dagger. This one is pretty much suitable for every single assassin. You can't go wrong with putting any assassins here. Some assassins are better suited for other artifacts, but just, you, you just can't go wrong if you do decide to put an assassin here. So just as simple as that. You can literally put any assassin here. Um, Poseidon's Trident. Once again, this is one's quite nice. Basically, it gives you a shield. Like, who wouldn't want a free shield at the start of the battle? This is especially useful in the meta right now with Sagittarius Sayers opening attack. So this is super useful right now in the meta. Uh, once again, this is a really nice one. I would recommend putting this with every single skill knight, with the only exception being Poseidon. The reason why you don't want to put Poseidon here is because Poseidon bounce damage at the start of the battle. So a shield on him is a bit useless. Um, some other ones, which is debatable, but I think it's still worse, it, would be the likes of a Crest Chemist. A Crest Chemist frees off the opponents at the start. Uh, but the same with this is that if, even if your shield doesn't get broken, you will still get an increased attack in that period. So you may think, you know, a shield and also his opening freeze is very contradictory. They kind of overlap, but it's fine. You just get increased attack as a result. So that's absolutely fine. So yeah, so for uh, Poseidon's Trident, the one for skill characters, apart from Poseidon himself, which is bit, you know, uh, irony, I guess, you know, Poseidon shouldn't be equipped with Poseidon's Trident. But apart from that, all the other characters, all the other skill characters can go here. Um, Shaka's Rosary, this one you have to be really careful of. Um, basically what this one does is make your protector sacrifice HP in order to provide the show from somewhere else, which sounds really good on paper. The only problem is quite a few of the protectors actually already have kind of some opening reduction skills, and that's going to overlap with what this additional skill is going to offer. So the likes of um, a Signal God Close, right? Your Moses and also a future character, Surplus Shield, they all offer redu uh, reduced damage protection at the start of battle. So if you're already reducing the damage, then there's very pointless of you sacrificing your own HP in order to create a shield. So that's pretty much the only ones you want to avoid. On top of that, because there's the negative effect of you actually sacrificing HP, generally speaking, you want to only equip tanks who have quite easy to regain HP. So for that reason, you don't really want to put someone like Taurus out of Baron because you want Taurus out of Baron to actually have high HP and you know, to bounce damage. However, if you have someone like Libra Shuru, your Libra Doko, they are able to self-regenerate HP. So that's quite nice for putting them into Shaka's Rosary. Agati, he is going to get immunity anyway, so it doesn't really matter for him to sacrifice bare HP up front. And also his Ultima is going to let him uh, recover his HP back. So all of them are going to be very suited for Shaka's Rosary. So yeah. Now the last one, seeing as Paul, this one's probably the most universal one. Like just put any assist knight here. Basically this one is just going to do a bit of um, healing of HP for both himself and also the ally with the lowest HP, which is just a really nice effect. The, it's not a very high percentage, but you know, it works. And uh, you know, who wouldn't benefit from extra HP? So it's just kind of a no brainer. All of the assist knight can go into here. All right, so all this is all of the exclusive. So, like I said, they are likely going to be the highest level out of all of your artifacts. So, try to equip them here with the few exceptions that I just mentioned. All right, now let's move on to the more standard artifact. Generally speaking, if you are only at rank one, so I, you have only unlocked the first level of effect, they are likely not going to be as good as the exclusive one. But from level three and level five onwards, when you have unlocked those additional skills, I would think they are actually probably better than a lot of the exclusive. So just keep an eye out on that. First one, Golden Sword. Golden Sword is basically saying that you are going to have increase attack as the battle goes on. So basically what you want to do is put on knights who are able to last a long time in the battle. So some of the standard ones would be the ones who are really difficult to kill. So for example, uh, Leo Iki, he can resurrect himself and therefore he can last a really long time in the battle. So that works. Uh, the other one would be Saga Light. In fact, let me switch it now. Saga Light is really good with this as well because he has his own self-protection where he hides away in his own dimension 
or his HP is low. So that kind of guarantee he's able to, uh, you know, be safe for at least 20, 30 seconds in a battle. And therefore this works really well for him. Uh, the other ones really, uh, that you want to do is more for boss battle. This is by far the best artifact to equip doing boss battle because boss battle, you, pretty much never die in boss battle you are always going to last for the full 90 seconds so this is going to give you massive amount of damage bonus as a result so a when you're in a boss ba uh, battle basically change all of your dps the one dealing the highest damage to your golden sword and that's kind of why i have my uh capricorn shura here because capricorn shura is kind of like compulsory for boss battles um so yeah so basically any boss battle characters doing D dps put them in golden swords. They are by far the best artifact for boss battle. Next one is golden show. Golden show um, is basically what happens at the highest level when you unlock additional effect is that it's gonna recharge HP per second. So as a result, normally you want to put those tanks. This is also gonna be the artifact that's gonna give you the highest HP bonus. So basically you really want to put on any character who would benefit from additional HP. A good example would be Krishna, for example. Uh, Krishna is able to put up a shield at the start of the battle, uh, his Kududini, which is scaling off his HP. So this works really well for him. Most of the tanks, you can put him here, or for any characters who you actually need a bit more defensive help, this is the most defensive artifact out there. So that's what you normally want to do for Golden Shield. Also something else that you may sometimes switch knights into for is when you're facing up against an enemy's Taurus and the Baron, and you need to control which one of your knight have the lowest HP. Or maybe if the enemy have a, a Scorpion Mirror, who always target the knight with the highest HP. Basically this one gives you the highest HP percentage. So this is a nice way for you to switch around your knights in order to make sure a certain knight get the lowest HP or get the highest HP as a result. So that's for Golden Shield. Uh, let's move on to Golden Bow. Golden Bow at base level, I would argue is one of the worst ones. However, as soon as it hits rank three, it becomes absolutely amazing. This is because once it's at rank three or rank five, it basically allow you to have increased crit and armor penetration whenever any skill is activated. Now, it's, there's no cooldown for this. Um, the, Bonus itself only lasts for six seconds, but there's no cooldown interval between how often you can activate. And basically what that means is for Golden Bow, if you have it unlocked at the highest level, you want to equip it with knights who are able to activate skills as soon as, um, as often as possible. So some good examples would be, uh, I don't know why I have this knight here, but where is a good example? A good example would be uh, Sagittarius. Sagittarius is very good with Golden Bow because he has this passive ability, I think, like a Sinus Guard or something. Basically, whenever he takes a certain amount of HP damage, he's able to get a bit of immunity. Now, because he takes damage a lot and then he regains uh, HP back, through his uh, lifesteal ability. So he is going to trigger this quite often. And as a result, every single time when you trigger that passive skill, you are going to increase your crit rate and armor penetration. So that works really well for him. Similar kind of story with Radamensis. Radamensis have this passive trigger defensive mechanic where he is immune to damage for a certain amount of time if he takes damage, which is too high, right? So this also works really well because he will be keep on triggering that multiple times in battle. And also he actually benefit a lot from extra crit as well. So this is perfect for Radamensis. Uh, Potomi can also work with this as well because when Potomi kill off someone with his mark, he is gonna immediately release that again. So for any kind of characters who is able to release skill very rapidly, they are very suited for Golden Book. But the exception is you have to have it at least rank three or higher. At base rank one, this is absolutely useless. Uh, like, you know, it deals extra damage to the enemy with more than 80% HP, but that's pretty much just going to be your first attack at the start of the battle. Afterwards, this won't be ever activated, which is why at rank one, this is not very good. Rank three or rank five, absolutely amazing artifact. All right, next one, Golden Twin Road. 
This is basically uh, very useful for any character who is very dependent on crit. So some of the really obvious ones are uh, Leo, uh, your Sheena, and also Dio. So basically what Dio has, like Sheena and Aurora, they're quite obvious, they're quite common now, so you probably already know they benefit a lot from crit. Uh, what Dio does is that when his HP is higher than someone else, he is also getting extra crit rate. So this works well with him as well. Uh, next, we move on to Golden Lance. This one is quite nice. Uh, basically, what it does uh, is the main one is actually rank 3. This is where you kind of get the power jump. Basically, what happens whenever you use your ultimate, you're going to recharge your HP. So this one is really beneficial for characters who are able to release ultimate very quickly. So some of the good example would be Deathmarks, right? Deathmark, as soon as he uh, one character is killed off, he is going to absorb all those Cosmo, and therefore he's going to release his uh, ultimate very quick. So that works for, well for him. Uh, it works well for Poseidon because Poseidon's uh, ultimate trigger effect is actually slightly different. You don't need the Cosmo bar to all the way to the max. When he gets certain amount of uh, I think it's more like time interval base. He's able to release his ultimate straight away. So Poseidon is able to release ultimate quite quickly, and that's why he is very good here. And also Poseidon sometimes needs a bit of self sustain. So the fact that this is able to recover HP after he uses ultimate, this works really well for him to help him to fully awaken. Um, Astro Huga also benefit because Astro Huga get increased Cosmo when a knight, uh, when an enemy is frozen. So therefore he get Cosmo quicker and therefore he's going to release Ultima quicker. Uh, the other character this will work well with would be um, Hound Asterion. Hound Asterion, once again, charge up Cosmo really quickly. Therefore he can release Ultima very quickly. The only thing is uh, Hound Asterion, if you have his constellation up, he actually recover quite a lot of HP as well. So it's up to you whether you want to equip Hound Asterion here. All right, so that's for Golden Lance. Uh, next one, Golden Triple Road. Basically what this one does is when you continuously hurt a target. So at rank three, when you continuously hurt a target, you are going to deal extra damage. So straight away, you would know, you know, you want to equip this with characters who are able to do damage over time. So basically that means any kind of poison um, attackers, right? So Aphrodite, for example, Babel was burn. Burn and Poison, they do damage over time, so they're very good. Pandora, also very good here with Golden Triple Road because her passive is just going to eat away um, HP every single second. So they are very good for Golden Triple Road. The other special mention here is at rank 5. Once again, the skill becomes totally different. It increases the speed of gaining Cosmo by 10%. So at that point, you may actually want to change this to another kind of character who would be beneficial to release Ultimate as soon as possible, just so that he have an extra Cosmo uh, speed. So, you know, once again, at rank five, this is going to turn totally different type of tactic. So, but basic uh, scenario here, assuming you don't have rank five leveled up, you want to use the ones who are able to do damage over time. So most of the poison will burn characters. And also Pandora. All right, next one, Golden Tofa. Golden Tofa um, basically allow you to stun the target for uh, whenever you do normal attack, well, 30% chance. And also you're able to get a shield when you do normal attack. So basically, this is very suitable for characters who are able to do normal attacks a lot. Now, a special mention would be uh, characters who are able to hit multiple targets with normal attacks, right? Because they are very reliant on normal attack. So that's why I'll have Niobe and Capella here. Niobe wants, uh, basically, his normal attack hits every single poison target. So, you know, makes sense for him to be equipped with this. Uh, Capella, his normal attack is able to bounce. So basically, you're getting multiple normal attack in one hit, and that really allows you to build up your kind of your days to target kind of thing very quickly, right? Naobi, you're hitting off the enemy with your normal attack, therefore you have a chance of stunning every single one of them. Capella, you're doing the same thing, you're hitting multiple things with your normal attack, you have a chance of stunning every single one of them. The other ones who are able to attack multiple enemies with their normal attack would be Capcom Shura, Libra Shura, they are all able to, uh, Libra Shuru and Capcom Shura, uh, and also Batomi, I believe, if you have his constellation or closer, I can't remember which one. But they are all able to uh, target 
I believe both of the front row with their normal attack. So that works really well with them as well. The other one I'm gonna, I'm not 100% sure, but I put him here anyway, is Sirius. The reason why I put Sirius here is that one serious skill is that when a shield is broken, he's gonna stun the enemy. It's not very clear from his skill description whether it's only the shield that's obtained from his skill or any kind of shield on him. And it's really hard to test because he keeps on putting on shield all the time. And I'm not able to determine in a battle whether the shield is due to his own skill or due to this golden tover. So for benefit of doubt, I'm going to put him here um, for potentially the fact that if you're actually able to do normal attack with um, Sirius here, he's going to grant himself a shield, and when that shield is broken, he's going to stun some enemies. So, you know, that would work really well with Sirius if that is indeed the case. But this is not something I'm com able to confirm, so just bear that in mind. Uh, Scepter Victory, this is another one which is absolutely amazing in rank 5, um, and totally different type of artifact, in fact. Um, basically, at the base uh, rank, so rank 1 and rank 3, what you're able to get is just increased Cosmo speed. So normally what that means is that you want to put it on characters who are able to gain, uh, who will benefit from releasing ultimate quicker and also have Cosmo quicker. Uh, so some of the classic ones would be uh, Sorrento. Sorrento is super suppressive once he has his ultimate because his ultimate, once he releases his ultimate, he will be able to keep on releasing ultimate. He will also prevent you from releasing ultimate. So you want him to release his ultimate as soon as possible. And that's why increased Cosmo speed works really well here. Uh, Mermaid Tetris is another honorable mention because Mermaid Tetris actually transfer her Cosmo to the knight that she's linked up to. So this is another way for you to get even more Cosmo to that knight without actually having to put him on this artifact. So that's why Mermaid Tetris also works here. Um, and then the other game changer is really when you have a rank five. And what that means is that when the character that is equipped with the Scepter Victory dies, he's gonna pass all of the Cosmo evenly to all of the, your, the rest of the team. And what that allows you to do is actually almost do like a bit of a kamikaze uh, build where you actually actively send someone to die in order for your entire team to gain Cosmo quicker. And the best character for this would be uh, Houndass Steering because like I mentioned earlier, Houndass Steering's passive allow him to increase Cosmo's gaining speed a lot faster than anyone else. So imagine if you have Houndass Steering, he is always going to have high amount of Cosmo because he just recharged so quickly and also with this artifact. So when he dies, it's very likely he is going to die when he still have a huge amount of Cosmo and therefore he's going to pass so much Cosmo to the rest of the team. And that really works uh, uh, well in a kind of like a Kamikaze build. So that's why, you know, rank five, once again, allows you to do completely different kind, uh, kind of tactic. And that's why you kind of have to bear in mind whether you are equipping someone to this at rank three or at rank five. Uh, then the last one, we have a Seamless Shield. This one's quite straightforward. Basically, you have a chance of recovering HP whenever you're getting hit by normal attack. So this, obviously, you only want to put it on someone who's on the front row because you know your knights at the back won't get hit by normal attack. So that's, that's just wasted. Uh, the best one for this are going to be characters who are actually able to have some kind of uh, trigger effect when they're getting hit. So the most obvious ones are going to be your likes of Adabaron or Argo, right? Um, what they are able to do is that when they're getting hit, they are able to, Adabaron is going to reflect damage. Argo have a chance of petrify. So if they now also have a chance of recovering HP when they're getting hit, that's going to make them a lot long, uh, survive a lot longer and therefore trigger more of those passive effects. So that's why they're really good. If you have someone like Aphrodite up front or Gemini Cannon who you put up front also for their kind of passive trigger, you can potentially also put them here. But you may also want to put Aphrodite for example in that damage of time artifact. Um, the other one I would suggest to put here would be Seahorse Bion. The reason why Seahorse Bion is quite nice is that Seahorse Bion really allows you to um, protect not just himself but also the other knight up front so if you're able to um place protect your seahorse buy-in longer because now he's gonna get uh have a chance to recover hp that not only protects himself but also helps you to protect your other front row 
knight. So therefore, essentially, you are using one artifact in order to protect two characters, which is quite nice as well. So that's why sequence buying also goes really well here. All right, so this is kind of all the artifacts. Like I said, totally type of skills will be unlocked if you have an up to rank three or rank five. So please do bear that in mind. Uh, if you don't have a rank three or rank five, a lot of time actually you're just literally looking at the extra stats bonus rather than the skills. So that's going to be totally different type uh, type of characters you want to put in there. Um, and like I mentioned, most of the knights are actually better served in their exclusive ones at early stages anyway. So if you don't have rank three in your other artifact, you probably won't go wrong with just putting them in this um, exclusive artifact, with a few exceptions I mentioned at the start.